Hello, welcome back to Project Air. I'm James and today we're going to be building a helicopter from scratch. Now in the last episode on this YouTube channel, I built a tip jet helicopter that used twin EDF motors. Although the very first test didn't see the aircraft in the air, I decided that I would go right back to the drawing board to build on what I'd learned. So in this video, you will see me building a Mark II, which is a slightly larger, much lighter helicopter that features a fuselage for experimenting with different control methods, such as gyros, thrusters, and wing surfaces, which are like controlled wing things that go underneath. Um, yeah, I'll explain more about that later. This aircraft should have a much better chance of getting up in the air whilst remaining just as hazardous. I'm going to try not to get decapitated. Now before some of you jump down into the comments and tell me why exactly this aircraft isn't going to work, why don't we take a quick look at how I designed the aircraft to eventually use gyros and thrusters for control. Right, for the new helicopter, I had five key design requirements. These are lightening the airframe, strengthening the landing gear, increasing the lifting area, increasing the blade speed, and finally adding dynamic control. So quite a lot, actually. Now, the first aircraft I created was far heavier than intended, meaning that the blades had to spin a lot faster than I originally wanted them to, to be able to lift the aircraft into the air. The landing gear of the aircraft was also very weak and wobbly, which made keeping the aircraft in one place a little difficult. Oh, walking. <laughs> so, drastically reducing the weight of the Mark II would mean that the rotors could spin slower, whilst a more sturdy set of legs would prevent the aircraft from easily tipping over or wandering off. Subsequently, as a main building material, I decided to go with balsa wood, a traditional model aircraft building material, as it is extremely lightweight and relatively strong. For the main spars of the wings, I used a harder wood in the form of square dowels to provide a lot of strength while the hub was made from a 3mm light ply sheet. The way that this helicopter wing is going together is actually designed very much like old school model aeroplanes actually. What you've got is the leading edge here, the spar, which is made of a harder wood in this case, and you've got the trailing edge. And then what we're going to do is put those ribs down. We have four big wings here, so uh, yeah, I'm expecting it to be fairly heavy. Huh, 248 grams for all of that wood right there. I also decided to go with a full helicopter style fuselage with a super rigid A-frame type landing gear built around it. Although this was mainly for looks because let's be frank, I wanted to build something that actually resembled a helicopter this time. I felt having a box below the rotors would also be useful for building a control system, which is something that I'll talk about in a minute. The next change I made to the design was to increase the lifting area. To further help lift the aircraft into the air, I decided to increase the wing area by building two additional wings. These extra surfaces are not quite as long as the others, but will provide over 50% more lift. Next, I wanted to increase the blade speed of the helicopter. One idea put forward by you chaps in the comments on the last video was to move the engines or the motors inwards from the ends of the wings to allow the ends of the wings to get up to a much greater speed, and therefore, again, increase the lifting force of the wings. I decided to experiment with bringing the 50mm EDF units all the way into the middle of the rotor assembly and removing the thrust tubes to increase their static thrust. Although I position them right at the center for now, I could always attach them to booms at 45 degrees of the main hub at various distances out to play around with finding the right torque. Also, EDFs aren't the most efficient things out there, so I'm planning on switching them out with some conventional race quad motors at some point for some further experimentation. Finally, adding dynamic control to the machine needed to be a priority. The Mark I helicopter was never intended to be an actual controllable aircraft in the traditional sense. All I wanted it to do was to take off, hover for a few seconds, and then land by decreasing the throttle and uh, yeah, that's all I wanted it to do, to prove the concept. Now I think I was slightly ill-informed about the stability of rotary wings back when I came up with this idea a few months ago. Since then I've realised that the reason that even the simplest of helicopters out there have gimbling heads is down to necessity. Okay, so let me explain with this pencil and this piece of cardboard uh, very quickly. So imagine that this is the, uh, the rotor assembly, these are the wings, that's the shaft of the helicopter. As soon as this whole thing starts to go off to the side slightly, there's no way that it can inherently 
uh, correct itself under its own built-in stability. So it's just going to wander off to the side and just go off course. Even if you hung a weight under here, it wouldn't naturally rock back to the centre like you might think. Um, I'll put some information about that in the description. But what happens if you have a mass under here and a pivot at the top so that it can rotate around this uh, this part of the of the pencil or the shaft? And this would be a legitimate way to take advantage of some weight underneath a helicopter. Um, and moving it around to make sure it's always in a state of stability. You could actually make something like that that would include um, a shaft being pushed around with some servos. However, I have thought of a new idea which doesn't involve any sort of gimbling head mechanism um, and it is a little bit more experimental. Okay, so at first my idea might look like I'm cheating, but these are four quadcopter type motors. These motors will be attached to the fuselage. This is the fuselage here from a top-down view. The rotor will be on the top and these will only spin when you want the helicopter to actually start manoeuvring. If you want it to bank to one side, then you can increase the thrust on one side of the helicopter. If you want it to bank to the other, etc. Just like a quadcopter or drone does. Originally I was thinking that I could use some sort of wings or something that would sort of uh, defle deflect the air. Now these thrusters, if that's what we're calling them, won't contribute to the overall lift of the helicopter. They'll only power on when I want the helicopter to move. And the reason I thought it'd be good to use these, uh, these motors in this configuration is because I can use a normal quadcopter style uh, control board with gyros and everything on them so it automatically stabilizes the helicopter. Now full disclaimer I've never seen this uh, done before I've no idea if it's going to work so comment down below tell me if you'd like to see me experiment with uh, this new uh, style of control and I will be experimenting with it in the next uh, next video if you think it's a good idea. Okay before we get too far along with the build the next thing to do is to test the structural integrity. This thing is ready for a first test. So this first test is just a quick vibration test to see if the uh, the blades fall off. I think it's got about a, hmm, let's see, 80% chance of staying intact. There's always that unknown, so 20% chance it might explode into a million pieces. I like it when I've built something that's so big you have to climb underneath it to, uh, to do what you need to do. Right, test one, go. Yes, I forgot to actually secure those. Now that could be a problem. The EDF has forced its way out. Completely forgot to put tape on those. Uh, my fault entirely. Second test. This is probably a very bad idea. Don't try this at home, but I'm gonna Check the vibrations by hand. Okay. So I think that the one thing that's immediately apparent from that last test is that the rotary wings aren't spinning fast enough, or at least not as fast as they should be, which was one of my main criteria. So I think before the next video what I'm going to do is reposition the motors by spacing them out a bit more so you get that moment of torque um, that's ideal for uh, getting the optimal speed on the tips of the rotors and therefore creating enough lift. Uh, so what I'm going to do is put them on that 45 degree arm that I uh, I posed back at in the build bit of the video. Talking of the next video though, uh, I'm not quite sure when it's going to come out due to all of the stuff that's going on in the world at the moment um, and me being stuck in this flat. Uh, currently, which is why I'm filming from here today. Do let me know if you'd like to see the next video on this channel be about the helicopter 
or whether you'd like maybe a smaller project. If you follow me on Instagram, then you might know already that I am working on some 3D printed rocket designs, which, um, yeah, that should be coming along at some point in the future. Uh, make sure to follow me on there if you'd like to see what I'm working on day to day and see projects progress as they happen. So comment down below, tell me what you'd like to see next on this channel, and I will do my best to uh, provide that to you. All right, chaps, thank you very much for watching. Um, click the like button on your way out. Make sure you are subscribed if you're not already. Thank you very much to all my patrons and I will see you on the next one. Cheers.